Hello traders and welcome to the first video within the fifth section of the IPDA Traders Private Mentorship course where we're going to be talking a little bit about risk management, right? Now that you've gone through the previous four sections where we discussed technical ideas very in depth, which means that you should understand what's happening here very well at this point, we're going to be partnering those ideas with risk management, which is essentially the section number five. And that is going to be very important because it really um, having the technical knowledge is one thing, but being able to partner those technical concepts with strict risk management, which means securing yourself at a given amount of pips or movement, right? We do not worry. We're going to be discussing all possible scenarios. But for now, understand that now that you have the technical knowledge, you want to learn how to partner those ideas with strict manage, uh, risk management and that way you can unsure yourself you have a unbeatable and a system you can constantly replicate and trade right so understand that very well you need strict risk management to make the previous sections work so with all that being said we're going to be jumping back into the drawing board and we're going to be discussing stuff right but this video should function as a introductory video for the section so do not worry we're going to be covering everything there is to risk management but just have some patience and bear with me right i took the time to actually structure the section in a way this should very much make sense to you guys as you go through the videos so we go back over here right and we pull up the whiteboard and as we said we are going to be discussing risk management so traders before we get into the actual lesson of today this is a very quick word from our sponsor today aaafx aaafx is a regulated broker which has been in the industry for over 14 years which gives you a lot of confidence when it comes to executing trades depositing money withdrawing funds trading funds as they're a very well known and very respected and established broker in the industry they allow you to trade pretty much anything you want including forex indices commodities stocks cryptocurrencies and they have something that not many brokers have which is a zero commissions account for forex pairs on ECN plus accounts. So if you're interested with them guys, you will find the link in the description below. Use the link in my description to sign up with them as if you do, you will be eligible for a 100% matching deposit, uh, deposit using it, which is very, very good and not many other brokers will do. So once again, massive thank you to AAFX for sponsoring this video. And now into today's lesson. Enjoy the video. Risk management. And let me grab this rectangle over here and we're going to get started. So first things first, we're going to be setting up some sort of a table because you need to understand risk management in two different ways. One of them being position sizing, that is a way of risk management, and this is important and key. And the other one being trade management, trade management. So let's actually get started with position sizing because it's a little bit easier to understand and then we're going to be moving into trade management. So position sizing actually refers to your risk tolerance. And I am sorry, but I cannot give you any clue or idea on how to do this because this is absolutely up to your risk tolerance, right? Just as the word says, which means that if we have, for example, a thousand dollar account, which is pretty standard. So we're going to be using this number every time you sit in front of the charts and a new trading session begins for you, right? And you're getting ready to trade and potentially execute positions. You should have a set amount of um, dollars or risk percentage that you're allocating for that day. Meaning that if you happen to get above that specific number, whether that be in dollars or that be in percentage, you are done for the day and you can no longer execute positions because that way you're really managing your risk, right? And you're avoiding crashing your account because it is very easy as we discussed to get emotional and to start executing positions 
recklessly. So you want to have a specific number that you um, use to determine when you need to stop, right? If you say to yourself, and we're going to be following up with the $1,000 account example, that, hey, I have a 2% risk per day, 2% risk per day. That means that whenever you get, uh, you lose 2% in a day or get very close to it, you're done for the day and you can no longer execute positions, right? Or um, if we measure that in dollars, that would be then uh, $20, right? Now, whether you want to distribute that risk in multiple positions or one single trade idea, that is completely up to you. For me, what I do is I use a specific risk percentage per day and I split that risk in multiple positions. I allow myself the luxury of being wrong more than one time before actually deciding, hey, I am done for the day. I am well above my risk. So you can potentially say to yourself, hey, I have a $20 risk for the day and I'm going to be splitting that in two positions, which means that I'm going to be risking $10 per trade, right? $10 and this trade over here, and if that happens to lose, well, I still have another $10 for the day that I can play with, right? And there is no set in stone rule that you can use for this, but for me, I use a specific risk per day, which is 1.5, right? I allow myself to lose a 1.5% risk in a particular trading session, and I, I have the luxury of splitting that risk in multiple positions if I decide to do so, right? So understand that, that you have two ways of managing your position uh, in regards to this the size of your position, meaning that you can either use a specific risk percentage or a specific dollar amount or euro amount or whatever currency you're dealing with, right? So this is everything in regards to your position size. And you need to have a determined and a specific number that reflects your allocated risk for the day. This is important and we're going to be writing it all over here. You need a particular number that reflects your risk for the day. And please take the time, write this down. I know some of you guys may already be aware of this, but I wanted to take the time to actually talk about this because this is important. Whenever you're starting a trading session, you want to make sure that you understand that, hey, today I only have 2% to play with, so I'm going to be managing that properly in regards to the amount of positions that I'm going to be taking or how my stop loss needs to be in order to comply with my risk. So this is really all there is to position sizing. Once again, it's pretty simple. You want to have a specific number of dollar or uh, percent, percent that you have to follow and that you cannot get above it in any particular trading day. And this topic is going to be covered once again within the uh, trading plan section. But for now, understand that, right? You want to have a specific number that you're going to be following in regards to how much money or percentage risk you're allocating for a trading day. And really take the time, analyze your patterns and see what is comfortable for you. If you're comfortable taking a 5% risk per day because your account may be a little bit smaller, then do that and test that out. Or maybe you have a bigger account and you don't need to risk uh, to risk that much and you're going to be happy with allocating a 1% risk per day, right? So this is up to preference and should be ultimately decided by yourself. Let's now move into trade management and this is where we're going to be spending the most amount of time because this is what actually um, refers to managing a position as it is live and happening and you want to be paying attention to different criterias that we're going to be discussing right now so criterias what criterias do we have well we have stop loss placement we have take profit placement we have partial areas partial areas and we have risk mitigation and 
Really, what we're going to be discussing in this particular video is having rules for each and every single one of the criterias, right? Let's draw an arrow over there and let's say four key criterias, criterias, we need, we need rules. So let's move it over here. We need particular and specific rules for each and every single one of the criterias. Now, the rules that you use, that is once again dependent to you. But I'm going to be giving you the ideas and knowledge in regards to placement, in regards to partial areas and risk mitigation, so that you can make the best decision for yourself. Right? So let's get rid of all this stuff, I believe. We don't need any of this stuff anymore. If you want to... Um, uh, sort of take notes or write stuff down feel free to pause the video and do that because i'm going to be getting rid of all this stuff over here so let's do that and let's once again do trade management and let's start with stop loss placement so what do we mean by stop loss placement right and this is actually covered within the confirmation section but you want to always make sure you're placing your stop loss consistently. Meaning that, hey, one time I'm going to be using a 20 pip stop loss. The other day I'm going to be using a 40 pip stop loss. No, that's not how it works. It doesn't mean that you always need to do a number in regards to the pip amount that your stop loss is going to be. But you need to have some criteria on how you determine your stop loss. For me, it is very clear. And that is actually explained in the confirmation section. And it is always going to be below or above the high or low that starts the mitigation well, what does that mean? And let me actually draw a market so that I can explain that. So let's say for an, as an example, we have a market like this, right? And I have a point of interest that I'm watching over here and I wait price trades into my point of interest and gives me confirmation, right? Whatever your confirmation may be, the confirmation section is there if you need to review anything. But let's say this is a valid confirmation to you because you have two shifts, meaning the external and internal shift. Now you're free to take trades, right? And you need to decide where your stop loss is going to be. Well, now um, you have multiple options here, right? Because you can tra take trades over here and you can potentially see another POI over here. So whether you want to sort of say to yourself hey i'm going to be entering here and i'm going to place my stop loss below this structure point over here right because we understand that this is now a higher low once again uh, we have a shift right we can see we had a low we failed to make a new lower low and hold the lower high matter of fact we actually created a higher high higher uh, higher low over here right let's actually imagine that this never gets above because actually then my example won't make sense so we say we never get above and this is our higher low and once again higher high right let's denote the structure over here higher high higher low higher high so you can say to yourself hey i'm taking a position right here and i'm going to be keeping my stop loss over here but I need to be aware that there is, there is a lower zone right here and that price may actually want to trade into that zone before moving higher. So what you can do is actually either take the trade over here, over here in this area and put your stop loss below the higher low and expect in price to do this and never trade below that. Or you can split your risk and this is where splitting risk actually comes into play right you can split your risk saying hey i'm taking um let's say you have a two percent risk for the day i'm taking one percent risk over here right with my stop loss below the higher low and if this happens to fail right which is a probability that that can occur and it actually reacts here and shifts higher over there then um i have the chance of getting right back in because i just risk one percent and I have 1% left that I'm going to be allocating for this point of interest over here, right? And in this case, you would take the trade right here 
and your stop loss will be placed below the low and that way you can be safe that hey if we trade below the low my trade idea is invalidated and i'm actually happy with being out of the position because i don't have any reasons to believe that we're now going to shift higher since we just made a new low right let's imagine price actually did take you out and started trading lower then you, then you want to be out of that position because your trade is invalidated and why would you still hold that trade right if your idea is no longer valid so as you can see this is um, how you can do it right this is these are some examples you could split your risk within the different point of interest that you're watching to take trades or another scenario of whoops of something that you can do and if we actually get rid of this stuff because it's getting messy let's actually redraw it again but we're going to be portraying a different example this time so we have our same point of interest over here again don't get confused this is simple we have our shift, whatever it may be. Let's say this is our shift right here. Another thing that you can do is take the trade at this POI, for example, right? Say to yourself, hey, I'm taking the trade here, but I'm going to be placing my stop loss below the low, right? And not splitting my risk just like with the, with the other example. So that means that you're going to have a slightly wider stop loss but it's a, that stop loss is going to be covering both POIs. And please take the time to understand this. That stop loss that you take as you take an entry over here, expecting price to push up, is going to cover all, P, all bullish POIs that you are now valid to take higher. So understand that there's multiple ways, right? We had this scenario where you split your risk into multiple points of interest, right just like with uh, we did with the previous example or you can potentially cover all the pois that you're watching to take trades um within one position right meaning that if you don't expect price to trade into this point of interest the lower one over here and you expect it to trade here and move higher you you still have to put your stop loss below the low because you never know if price actually wants to come over here but in case it does right if it actually comes lower and trades into this point of interest over here you are safe because now your stop loss is covering both point of interest and if price happens to uh, trade below the low this one over here then you know that yeah, that your trade idea is no longer valid and that you essentially want to be out of that position so those are the things you want to keep in mind when trying to determine your stop loss, right? If you want to maximize your RR and reach those crazy gains, which actually can very well occur if you trade the way we do it, then you would actually choose the idea of taking the trade at this POI and leaving your stop loss below, just, uh, below this POI over here, accepting the fact that price can trade into the lower one and still continue out right which means that it would literally take you out trade into the lower point of interest and then resume higher but if you do not care that much about achieving the crazy rr then you can take the same trade over here right and let's remove some of the stuff let's keep this one you can take the same trade over here but you're going to be covering uh, all POIs and putting your stop loss below the low over here. That way, if price decides to invalidate its, this point of interest, trade into the low one and then resume up, you're still in the same position. You have not taken a loss and you're still in the trade, right? And you can profit as price trades higher. So that is really all there is to stop loss placement, right? You can be flexible with this meaning that sometimes you want to use the variant number one which is splitting your risk in multiple pois right and just maximizing your rr that way or you can use variant two which is using that slightly wider stop loss but covering all the possible bullish pois that you believe that should lead into higher prices as you have your structure correct liquidity correct confirmation uh, correct and sort of everything else right so understand that you have two variations 
you can choose for yourself and you can be flexible meaning one uh, for one particular scenario it may actually make more sense to try and maximize that rr by splitting your risk or in other scenarios it would actually make much more sense to account for all the bullish pois you are expecting um price to trade into and sort of move higher so that is it to stop loss placements and do not worry because as we go through the videos we're going to be doing plenty of um trade examples and we're going to be discussing those in depth and applying the ideas but for now keep that in mind right you have two variations in regards to your stop loss placement and you're free to play with those you can for some scenarios use variant number one and for others use variant number two so let's remove all this stuff over here and let's continue right so let's get rid of this and let's now talk a little bit about your take profit placement take profit placement and we're going to be doing doing a bearish scenario just to have some um to change it a little bit right so let's say we have a market like this right you have your whatever break in market structure then you have your poi over here where you are expecting sales to occur and you wait price trades into that gives you your confirmation right let's say this is your external shift then you come back 50 percent plus establish in this case a lower high then confirm this lower high with that new lower low and now you're valid to take sales and as you can see same scenario over here right in regards to your stop loss you've got multiple pois where you can enter and you can decide if variant one or two is going to make more sense right so how do we target what do we look for well there is multiple ways of doing that and this is actually going to be something that you're going to decide for yourself and this is covered within the free youtube video that one has also great information but we're going to be getting more in depth over here so you can use a particular rr gain in regards to when you want to take your profit you can use structure to take profits you can use liquidity to take profits or you can use highs and lows to take profit and we're going to be covering all of those not a big deal so let's do that and let's actually start with a rr gain well this is pretty self-explanatory if you want to take profit in regards to a particular rr gain then you can do that right you can say to yourself hey once i reach a one to two I take 50% or once I reach a one to three, I take 50% and I take another 50% as we reach one to six, right? And you want to create rules for yourself. If this is something that sounds appealing to you and that is going to make sense, then you want to be using RR gain, right? Meaning that if I enter my position over here, I take a sell right and i put my stop loss above the high because i'm i'm covering all bearish pois then once the trade is executed and it starts moving in my favor once i hit that one to three that i've determined for myself i'm taking 50 percent off right so let's say that at this point you reach one to three well then you take 50 percent off and the same thing goes for when you reach one to six you then watch price price does whatever and then it drops and continues and gives you your one to six you take another 50 percent off the important thing here is that you want to have consistency in taking and take profits right now where you take your ultimate take profit that could be a one to nine for example right if you're following the rule over here you can say to yourself hey at a one to nine i'm done i don't want any anything to do with the trade i have actually done what i needed to do and that is it you take your one to nine with all the partials on the way and you're done and you don't need to be stressing out if price then continues lower or if it never reaches your one to nine and reverses because you're actually deciding for yourself how you want to manage 
your risk and that is really all there is to rr gain right you want to specify a specific amount of, of gain in which you um, decide that hey this is good enough for me to partial but the important thing is you want to determine that uh, before actually trading right you want to know when you're taking your profits and you want to be consistent with it if you decide and test that rr gain is something that makes sense to you and that you can replicate day in and day out then stick with it and that's it do not overthink it do not sort of um change things up if you've back tested a particular way and stick to that so let's now continue with the idea of taking profits at structure or opposing zones it's really the same thing we're going to continue with the same trade idea but we're going to be looking at a different way of managing it right so let's get rid of some not that i need that i just want to get rid of this over here right so same trade idea right as you take your sell over here instead of partialing at a specific rr gain you want to be partialing at opposing zones or structure which means that you should understand that there, there's going to be certain price points in the charts where your trade is going to have uh, some sort of trouble in continuing in your specific direction, right? Just as an example, this area over here may be something you want to pay attention to as you trade, as your as your trade develops, right? Meaning that there is a chance that price can move down into this um, block over here because you understand that this is a down move before an up move even though it never actually provided a break right and hence why you would actually never look at a poi like this to take buys you still want to be paying attention to that because there is a probability that price trades into this point of interest and then shifts higher and then you're left wondering well, what happened over here right so this is where the idea of opposing zones or structural partials or take profits come into play right now you can say to yourself every time we reach a low point in the market or a high point in the market for bullish scenarios i'm going to be taking partials so you can make rules around that as well right as you can see it all revolves around you creating rules for yourself but let's do an example over here let's say that we want to take profits using the idea of structure so we can say to ourselves once we hit structure points i am taking 50% off or 25 or 95 and putting and setting my stop to break even but uh, that's for later but for now focus on this once we hit a structure point I'm taking 50% off meaning that once my trade reaches this area over here you are taking 50% of your position and what you're going to be doing is following the same principle as you trade into a, let's say that um we had another point of interest over here in that you understand that as price trades into this block over here we're going to probably have some trouble continuing lower so you say to yourself that hey let's remove this let's say you take the trade it drops nicely you take your first partial over here right just as per rules and you take your second partial as you reach maybe a refined area within this overall block right let's say we have a refined area that we're watching maybe this particular down move over here this means that you are now taking more profit as we hit this structure point over here and that is really all there is to partialing at structure i'm not uh, taking too much time because we do have more stuff to talk about but i just wanted to present you the different ways of taking profits right we've got our r gain we've got structure which uh, i just essentially explained right you want to be paying attention to those uh, price points where uh, you know that there is some sort of trouble in continuing in that particular direction so you decide that you want to take profit and same thing goes for this area over here as we trade into that you take another partial 
So traders, let's now continue with taking profit at liquidity areas. And at this point, you should have noticed that I'm doing take profit placement, right? And uh, partialing at the same time because they really do work hand in hand and it makes much more sense that way, right? If you remember the four key criterias that I showed to you in the beginning, I talk about partialing and take profit placement, right? We're, we're doing, a, we're essentially doing both at the same time because they work hand in hand. So with all that out of the way, let's go to um, and talk about liquidity. Uh, partialing right so that means that let's say we have a market like this once again you get into your cell position let's say over here right you take a cell whoops wrong tool let me actually grab the rectangle you take a cell right and you identify that we have some sort of double bottom liquidity over here just imagine right let's say oh, let's see if i can fix this I may actually be able to do that. Let me try. So let's say instead, yes, we have something like this. And this is a double bottom liquidity. And you can identify the liquidity sitting below this area. Then instead of taking profit at a specific RR or a specific structure, you're partialing at liquidity. Meaning that as price trades, lower and reaches that double bottom you are taking a partial right there or closing your position i don't care do whatever you want in that sense right decide for yourself but this is the idea of partialing at liquidity you identify liquidity in the direction that you want to trade to play out with and you target that you use that as a target for yourself you say hey we have a double bottom liquidity. I'm going to be taking taking the sell up here and I'm going to be targeting this because I know that we have stop losses below this area that may want to be taken out, right? And the same thing goes for a trend line liquidity, for a Asia high or low liquidity, London high, low liquidity. It is all the same thing. If you identify, let's say this time, instead of you having a double bottom liquidity, this time you have a trend line over here you see a trend line building and price sort of respects the trend line over here you take a sell at this point and now you can target the trend line liquidity you can say to yourself hey once i reach this trend line liquidity i'm out or i'm taking some risk off or I'm mitigating my position, but that's later. For now, focus on this, right? You say to yourself, I've identified a trend line as we reach into that and take that liquidity out. And if you watch price, you will notice that we do take that liquidity out, then you take your profit. And lastly, just to cover everything up over here, let's say that instead you have a Asia low liquidity, right? you see that this is asia low over here right this is the low that was printed in asia hence you know that this is a liquidity pool so as price trades into that same thing applies you are taking partials and whoops and let's actually take the time to write that down right so liquidity you can partial at trend line liquidity you can partial at double top liquidity double bottom you can partial whoops you can partial at Asia highs, Asia lows, right? Asia high, Asia low. You can partial at London high, London low. And that is another way of consistently taking partials, which is essentially partialing at liquidity. Good. I hope that this was very clear in regards to partialing at liquidity. I believe it should be pretty, pretty straightforward, right? You want to take profits as liquidity is being taken in the market, right? So you could potentially take a profit over here. And then you see that you do have some more liquidity over here. And you can now take that out too and partial once again. So you see the multiple options i'm presenting you here right so don't get confused don't try to implement all of those just whatever resonates with you is what you should actually take the time to back test and if you happen to create a way of managing risk that makes sense to you then you're going to be successful that is pretty straightforward and really, uh, partialing at liquidity and partialing at highs or lows 
is the same thing. You don't need to learn anything new here. You understand that above and below every single swing high and swing low, there is liquidity. So if you're partialing at liquidity areas, you are essentially applying highs and lows theory as well, which means that as price trades below this low, you understand that liquidity is being taken out because above and below every single swing in the market, there are sell stops and buy stops. So once you trade below that, right, you take your partial or you close your position, whatever you want to do, and you're done. So that is all there is to take profit placement. I really hope this um, makes some sense to you. You have these four options over here. And I forgot to add, actually, now that I think about it, you can partial at a particular pip amount. And this is pretty self-explanatory once again, right? If you trade, let's say, Euro USD, and you can say to yourself, at a 20 pip move, I'm taking some risk off. At a 30 pip move, I'm taking risk off or I'm closing my position, right? I'm not going to be wasting much more time with this topic over here. Pip amount is essentially partialing or taking profit as you reach a certain pip amount, which can work very well, especially if you partner that idea with liquidity or structure, right? Let's say that you have a structure point over here and that is 20 pips away or more or less 20 pips away then you can say to yourself, hey, as I reach 20 pips, I'm going to be taking profit because that also means that I'm trading below the slow, which means that liquidity is being taken out. So uh, now you can see how these three, sorry, these four criterias really work hand in hand in regards to your take profit placement and taking partials. So that is going to be it for taking partials. We're going to continue now with more information. So traders, here we are once again. And if you remember at the beginning of the video, I told you about the four key um, criterias and principles in regards to trade management, which are essentially these four over here. And you should understand that so far we've covered stop loss placement, take profit placement and partials. So all they're missing is essentially risk mitigation which is another essential key to trade management so we're going to be talking a little bit about risk mitigation and this is going to be sort of the end of the video and we're going to be learning more and applying the knowledge in future videos within this section so let's get rid of this and let's actually take a second and say risk mitigation so risk mitigation is essentially you trailing your stop loss or moving your stop loss in order to mitigate risk. It's not the same as taking partial positions out and that way decreasing your lot size. It's actually mitigating your risk in regards to how you are managing your stop loss and your opened risk. So let's say we have a market like this over here right let's say you take a buy at this point because your confirmation is there once again that is covered in the confirmation section but you get your external shift you get your valid retracement and you get your internal break so now you're valid for buys right and let's say you take a position over here so you take a buy and this is where risk mitigation comes into play as price trades in your favor, right, as it starts going in your direction, you can still mitigate risk without even having achieved your first partial area or take profit area, right? As price trades uh, away and sort of starts giving you profit, you can mitigate your risk by trailing your stop loss below structure, right? We have multiple options trailing below structure or moving to break even and sort of letting it run so as an example a way of mitigating risk could be you can say to yourself hey as price trades above this previous high over here i'm moving my stop loss below the low or i'm moving it to break even or whatever you want to do right? You can say to yourself, 
once we trade above this high my stop loss will be trailed down here because i understand that now we've made a new structural point higher so price should really have no interest in trading below the low once again and that way if price happens to then reverse and take you out you've lost a a, a smaller amount of money than what you anticipated to lose and that way your losses are going to be extremely small and your winners can be huge because we all understand the the potential of trading smart money concepts and the rr that you can obtain right so that is a way of managing your risk meaning risk mitigation as price trades above this high over here i'm moving my stop loss below the structure because i understand that price has no business in trading once again below the low and if it does i want to be out of the position pretty simple and straightforward right but this is just an idea of uh, mitigating risk you could also very well say hey once a I, once price reaches a one to two let's say your one to two area is right here i'm moving to break even and this is a rule that you have for yourself and that you are going to follow right at a one to two my stop loss is going to break even at a one to two my stop loss is going to break is going to break even and the same thing applies if we continue right and then you say at a one to four right my pop, my stop loss is moving to one to two or if we follow the structure idea that i presented to you in the beginning you can say to yourself as price retraces one more time and makes one uh makes a new high once again then i can trail my stop loss below this low over here locking in some profit right over here and not guaranteeing myself that i'm not going to be taking a loss in this particular trade but there is countless options on how you want to do it so you have to decide for yourself i'm sorry but i cannot give you the blueprint over here i can show you what i do with precision i can do that and i will most probably be showing it at the end of the section but for now focus on the ideas because i want to build you as a trader right if you're comfortable with um mitigating your risk as a new high is established you can very well do that and that's something that you can use to mitigate your risk right and once again this is different than taking partials taking partials is reducing your lot size as you um as you as price moves in your favor what we're doing here is once price is moving in your favor you are sort of reducing your risk by moving your stop loss whether that be at break even or below lows in this case or below structure or below liquidity whatever you want to do right below liquidity is probably not going to be the best idea but you get the point so that is going to be it for this first video within the risk management section and please take notes rewind the video if needed we're going to be getting more in depth as we as you go through the videos so stay tuned for that and thank you guys for tuning in remember that you can always reach out to me and ask questions i'm i try to be as available as possible so keep that in mind and i will see you guys very soon